Hi, my name is Jen Walling. I'm from the Illinois Environmental Council. I'm the executive director. Today I'm going to talk to you about Illinois compost and regulation, just a little bit about history and things that we've done to increase food scrap composting in Illinois through legislation. I'm a lobbyist and our organization is the umbrella group for about 60 different environmental organizations in Illinois. Um, and we work on lots of different issues, but since this is a waste, I'm going to talk more about composting. Why are we composting? I mean, there's the basics of diverting this material from landfills and creating a new product that can be used as a soil amendment. Um, but another thing, jobs. Um, the Institute of Self-Reliance estimates that four composting jobs are created for every landfill job needed to process the same amount of waste. This is really important and we should be doing anything that we can to increase uh, compost in Illinois. So we have a lot of yard waste composting in Illinois, but when we wanted to compost food scraps from restaurants and such, it was very difficult and often prohibitively expensive to obtain a permit to compost food scrap commercial in Illinois. This is because these uh, facilities were known as pollution control facilities, which that's the same as a landfill, um, hazardous waste site, very intense waste processing facilities, and they have to go through a very long community process in order to be sited. Um, certain places, your minimum cost is a million dollars, and some of the food scrap composting facilities don't even cost that much for the entire project. No matter what size they were, you had to go through this. Um, there was an exemption in Illinois law from that, and that's on-site composting, um, which uses the compost on-site. So if you are a school and you have um, food scrap in uh, your cafeteria, you can bring that food scrap outside to a bin to be composted, and then you have to use the end product compost on site. The second you bring in something from offsite, you need to get a permit, and it was this very difficult to obtain permit. So the first thing we did to address this issue was Senate Bill 99 in 2009. Um, this was where we uh, allowed um, the first commercial food scrapping, scrap composting law, and it basically put it in the same area of the law as yardscape, uh, yard waste, landscape waste. Um, which is, you know, very simple solution, but it took five years to pass this law. In the end, we thought we were going to have a lot of issues, particularly with waste haulers and such, um, but in the end, we all supported it, and we came up with a really great piece of legislation through negotiation. Uh, some pictures just of since then, five years later, here are some actual compost sites that are composting food scrap. That's a picture of me with State Senator Heather Staines, the sponsor of the bill at a food scrap composting site in the suburbs. And the bottom pictures, or another urban farm um, composting site, Growing Power, that's their um, hoop houses that they're doing some composting in, inside where they're doing some vermicomposting. Um, right over here, they've got about 40 of those different vermicomposting bins. So it's really great. Now, from here, there's still a lot more that we need to do to build composting infrastructure in Illinois. As I'm sure you're aware, we don't have pickup of food scrap. It's not very easy for residents to do unless you're doing it at your house, which it just doesn't work for some folks. Um, so, you know, we have goals of what we want to accomplish, and um, those goals are that we want to grow food scrap compost in Illinois, but still ensure that these composting facilities are real legitimate sites. Um, and part of the reason that um, I bring this up, you know, part of why it was so hard to pass food scrap composting in Illinois was because uh, landscape um, waste composting we banned landscape waste from the landfill in early 90s, and a lot of different landscape waste sites cropped up. And part of the problem with that um, was that a lot of sites weren't actually composting sites. They were definitely environmental hazards. They were dumps, they were unlined dumps, and it was a really big environmental problem. And so, uh, you know, that's definitely set the industry back, and we don't wanna have bad actors doing composting. We wanna make sure everybody's doing things correctly and healthy and um, not harming the environment with these sites we wanna create. And this is something else here. This is this picture of a, uh, someone in Oak Park using, they have curbside drop off of composting there. This wouldn't have been achievable five years ago simply because there was nowhere to take it. Now, we definitely need more places to take composting. So one of the things we need to do is um, have a better permit process for um, small and medium-sized composting facilities. Uh, you know, for example, vermicomposting, that's where you compost with worms to create these castings that was in a picture uh, a few slides ago. Um, and uh, vermicomposting is always indoors because the worms can't handle extreme temperatures. 
Um, and often it's completely enclosed inside. And uh, this process really just isn't appropriate. Um, the permitting process isn't appropriate for vermicomposting because you need to do things like topographic map or endangered species maps. And if you have a box with some wormas in it that are not interacting with the other environment, you really shouldn't have to do those things. So that's just one of the tweaks that we really have to make through this law um, to make sure that it works. And then, um, you know, there are complaints that people make about composting facilities. So making sure that each facility does the right thing um, is really important. So um, this, I've kind of put this together to explain how the tiers of composting work in Illinois and, and how we can, um, you know, advance each tier. And this is how it is right now. So that bottom tier, the local siting authority, that's a pollution control facility. And that's what I talked about that we exempted the food scrap composting facilities from. They used to be much like a landfill. And, and so now pollution control facilities are more like landfills, hazardous waste sites, et cetera. Um, 807 permit, that's the permit you need to get food scraps. And 830 permit is what you need to get landscape waste um, only. And then, um, you know, I, I said that there was no permit for an on-site operation. Um, now we've made some tweaks to this as well, but here I'll, I'll show you just as an example. Here's what um, the 807 permit, all the different things that you need for it. And like I said, some of this is not appropriate and some of this is very onerous. So um, cleaning some of this up for the smaller projects and also for um, you know, those facilities where it's not applicable, it's really important. So we're gonna keep working on making those changes. Um, and a lot of these, you know, I talked about how, you know, the first thing we did was through statute, and I'm going to talk a few more statutes that we did and ways that we are able to um, help develop the infrastructure through st statute. But a lot of this, um, these permit requirements are in what's called our administrative rules. Now, administrative rules are sort of the details to the statute. So if a legislature, legislator decided to pass a law that said all legislators must wear blue shirts on Tuesday, the administrative rules might say something like, um, you know, no aqua shirts are allowed, or it must be a navy blue, or something that, um, or it must be a button-down Oxford shirt that's blue. Um, so that's where uh, these administrative rules come into play, and, and um, they're very important in understanding how the law in Illinois works. Um, so here's another set just of how we're looking at the different composting categories to divert waste in Illinois. There's the on-farm, uh, vermicomposting sites um, and small to medium sized compost facilities. So um, here we also did in um, 2013 we did a few pieces of legislation um, and now on that's the side that's Senator Kaler from Peoria and Wes King from the Illinois Stewardship Alliance and these are three pieces of legislation that we worked on together and I have some big long slides about them but I'm going to talk about why each is important. So this is a bill that we put together um, that, uh, so there is a, um, you know, I talked about all these permits you have to get and how it's so difficult to get these permits. Um, when you're on a farm, of course, farmers have been composting forever. So farmers have an exemption from any permits so long as they're only using a certain percentage of their land. However, this only applied to um, rural areas. Um, and, you know, we're getting a lot more urban farm and suburban farms that are growing in areas we traditionally weren't before. And these farms especially need compost because um, urban farms uh, don't, sometimes they don't have any soil on the site that you want to go at. You might be growing on a, on a piece of pavement and you might need to compost there. Um, and so, like, how you're going to do that um, is really important. So this extends that rural exemption to, um, you know, a suburban and urban areas. But um, one of the differences is that you can't do a tipping fee. And part of that is we don't want these to be composting businesses. These are farms. Um, so we don't want to encourage illegal dumping and, and that sort of stuff. So um, here's another part that's really exciting about what we passed. And one of the other things is that the very small composting sites we really had an issue with because, you know, if you're going to be doing something that's really tiny, um, you know, it's basically five cubic, yard, cubic yards and less is what the EPA did not regulate. And that's like basically your backyard compost thing. But if you have a community garden, and you want to accept a little bit of stuff from your neighbors to make a better compost, you couldn't do that. That's actually illegal, although I know people everywhere are doing that. 
Um, but so what we did here was, um, you know, the uh, we put together a 25 cubic yard restriction. So that's the point at which IEPA no longer permits. But this allowed stuff like community gardens, school composting, all those sorts of small composting facilities that really could be dealing with some of this waste. So there's that. And this was another thing that we did was expand what rural farms could take last year through this other bill. And I mean, this is sort of silly because um, farmers everywhere, they've been composting for hundreds of years, and they've been composting all sorts of things that they can. And it's very um, usual in rural communities for farmers to trade materials on sites to compost. And a farmer that we were working with got ticketed from taking corn silage from somebody who lived next door. And, um, you know, these are definitely the sorts of things that we want to divert from the landfill and that, um, you know, farmers should be able to deal with. So we expanded what they were able to do. So um, this is the last one that we did, and this one's kind of neat too. This is a pilot program for um, uh, uh, food scrap to be taken to waste transfer stations. So um, this is something that definitely helps with the development of curbside programs. And this basically allows um, a test, a trial run at a couple of waste transfer stations to allow this food scrap um, to be at these sites. And um, you know, this is really great because you know, sometimes you're taking in really small loads and you want to put it into a bigger truck and save transportation costs and take it to one site, particularly if you're just picking up from restaurants and such. And this allows that to happen and, and save costs and infrastructure. And these are just some other things that we want to do. Um, definitely want to do more to do local ordinances because that's how that um, interacts with the state law. Encouraging the use of compost is incredibly important. We have to do that anywhere that we can. Um, and, you know, I, I put this in the next slide, too, just legislation that we hope to go after. We definitely want to clarify um, some things with uh, anaerobic digestion, which is a type of compost, about to regulate each tier that I talked to you about, and um, really encourage use of the end product. Oh, misspelling there, but encourage use of the end product by municipalities and that sort of stuff, because we really have to grow this market, and the state can help do that through um, encouraging use of the product. Here's my contact information. Um, thanks for watching and, and feel free to uh, contact me. Thanks.